My next guest makes his UFC debut coming up here against uh, Shaman Marias at UFC 227 on August 4th. It is Matt Sales joining me here on the program. Matt, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, James? I'm doing very well. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Now, uh, people watching this will remember you from Contender Series last month where you got that really impressive win. I imagine you were pretty confident once you got the victory that you were going to get the contract, or were you a little bit worried because there were some other finishes on the card? Um, there was a lot of finishes, but I, I knew I'd catch Dana's eye. Um, uh, being in the back and seeing all the knockouts happen before me, I kind of was a little nervous, you know, especially when he was uh, announcing all the uh, the contracts. He already gave out three, and I knew he hadn't given out any more than three before. So uh, when he gave out that fourth one, he finally said my name, you know, I was a little relieved, but I, I had a, a good feeling about it. Excellent. Now, how do you celebrate after a win like that and, and you get the UFC contract? I imagine uh, you must have got to enjoy the night pretty good. Yeah, I actually just went back to the hotel, ate a bunch of food. And then went, that, that's went awesome. I mean, because you're dieting yeah. and all that stuff. Like, like it is nice to just, uh, you know, get a nice meal, maybe have a drink or two and just uh, sort of unwind a little bit because it's grueling training camp and especially uh, doing the, uh, the the show as well. There's that added pressure, obviously, of it being uh, on the Contender Series. Right. Yeah, yeah, I was. But, uh, you know, after the fight is... It was kind of surreal, but uh, once I got back to the hotel room, I, I took it in as much as I could, and it still feels a little, uh, little surreal. But moving on now. Now, aside from them telling you that you had the UFC contract, did the UFC say anything else to you as far as your performance or anything? Because it was a really impressive win. Um, no, I saw Dane in the back. He con- he congratulated me, said a uh, good fight, and uh, you know I just look forward to putting on some more better fights for these guys and uh, showing them what I can really do. You know, spend some more time in the octagon and uh, you know give a little more. Um, you know, put some more technique on display. What about social media? I'm sure, uh, you know, there's a lot of people giving you props. I'm sure a lot of people uh, wanted to be friends with you after that, just with the fact that that was such an impressive victory. Yeah. Um, social media kind of blew up. I got guys hitting me up, you know, guys, girls, everybody from uh, middle school, you know, junior high to, to high school. So uh, it's been it's been a little different adjusting to the attention. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever. I'm just kind of blowing it off and uh, – you know, the guys who have been there with me since day one will stick around. And all these new people, you know, I'll, I'll say thank you, you know. Uh, they'll tell me congratulations. But, you know, I'm just I'm just focused on me right now. For sure. And uh, like I mentioned, that fight was last month. And we got this fight coming up here in August. One of the cool things about this, aside from the fact this is a really stacked card, is that this fight's going to be in L.A. And, of course, you trained at Alliance MMA. How happy are you to make your debut, uh, you know, in California, uh, you know, to kind of make your mark? Uh, I'm really excited, man. I'm, I'm just close to home. Um, the last one is, is in Vegas, a little far for people to come out and visit, and uh, tickets are really limited. So uh, I'm excited to go out. Uh, my, my, a lot of my family is going to come out, friends, you know, kids I haven't seen in forever are going to come watch me fight. So I'm really excited for that. Excellent. And uh, people seem to think that you're Ticketmaster at this point. I know a lot of people think that you get free tickets and all this. Like, are you kind of having to tell them, like, look, go to the website, buy the tickets? I, I can't help you out. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, I post it on social media, but some people just don't read the comments. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You just uh, keep asking me. They think they can get hooked up because they know me, but I, I can't hook them up. So uh, it's, been, it's been a little weird, but yeah. No, I, I hear it. It, it comes with it, right? It's one of those things where people really want to go. They want to support you, but they also think that, like, you have a gazillion tickets, which just isn't the case. You know, it's just you only get a certain amount. Yeah, right? yeah. Right, yeah, I only get a, I think I think I get four, and you know, it's friends and family, you know. Yeah. So yeah, you got you got to prioritize <laughs> for sure. Are you expecting a big crowd out for for this? Uh, again, it's your debut, and, and you mentioned it's relatively close to San Diego. Yeah, uh, I'm ex- I'm assuming a lot of people will show up for me. Um, I think I'm on the early prelim, so I'll be on the the fight pass uh, card. Um, but uh, I think a decent amount of people will show up, and hopefully, I can you know sell a decent amount of tickets and uh, show Dana I have some fans there. You're taking on Shaman Moraes, like I mentioned off the top. He's got that 9-2 and two record. R- really tough to gauge his first fight because, of course, he had to fight Zabit, which, uh, you know, is, is a really just a tough matchup for anyone. Um, how do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, stylistically, I feel I feel like it's a good fight for me. Uh, we're both kickboxers. Uh, I'm a little higher pace. Uh, he's got the one big kick tie style kind of striking, whereas I'm more of a uh, kickboxer, more boxing volume, more footwork. So I think... Uh, Stylistically, I beat him. Um, I got better grappling than him. I don't see him taking me down or submitting me or anything like that. But he, he is a dangerous opponent. Um, like you said, he defies a beast. So it's hard to, to tell how good he is from off that fight. But um, watching his past fights, he seems like a dangerous guy. He fought since November. And, of course, before that, he fought in uh, June of 2016. If we're, if we're looking at, at both of you on paper, I mean, you've been a lot more active than he has. Do you feel like that will play a, a factor in this matchup? 
Uh, I think it will a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's it's always a fight when you get in there. You know, it's always you know one punch can change the fight. So uh, when I get in there, I'm not going to be thinking too much about that. Just more about what I'm going to do and what he's going to do. And how's training camp going at Alliance? You got a lot of teammates fighting uh, relatively close together. I just talked to your teammate Jeremy Stevens yesterday. Of course, he's got that big fight against Jose Aldo. You got Ross Pearson on that card as well. Like the morale must be really good at, at Alliance right now. Yeah, it was good, man. Uh, when I first heard about this fight, I was actually going to be in that same card uh, with Ross and Jeremy. Uh, so we all got real pumped and started training. Um, but then I found out it was going to be August 4th. So kind of changed the, the timing changed up a little bit, but we're still getting our rounds together. We're beating each other up pretty good. Uh, all the guys around me down there, you can't beat, you know. So it's, it's really uh, it boosts your, your confidence a lot just being around those guys. Would, would it have been your first time to Canada? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, actually. Interesting. Is that something you want to do in your UFC career is travel a little bit? I mean, that is one of the benefits is getting those extra frequent flyer miles going to, you know, they go to like Australia, they're in Hamburg this Sunday. So there's a lot of options, obviously. Yeah, yeah. When I, when I started fighting, it was always a goal to to travel the world and, you know, hopefully get to the top level and uh, get center and fight all around the world, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll um, knock some places off the list for sure. Alliance is a big camp, uh, like a lot of camps out there. Is there anyone specifically you're training with a little bit more as far as training partners than, than others? Uh, no, usually we're just both through the bodies. We have guys that come in. We have the guys that have been there for a few years. So I, I've, I've seen a lot of different looks over the years, and I know what I'm dealing with. So um, really, whoever I got there, as long as they're orthodox and they look like my guy, I can tell them what to do. I can, I, You know, I know the game enough to, to be able to make adjustments. How about the weight cut? I mentioned this is a little bit of a quick turnaround. Uh, I imagine you kept the weight down just in case uh, anything came up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, weight cut's going easy. Uh, I decided to stay a little bigger this fight. Last camp, I only cut uh, about seven pounds the day of, nothing before. So I like to cut about maybe 10, 10, 12 pounds this fight. So I'm a little heavier, but more muscle this time. And uh, I'm excited just to go in there and just, you know, feel good, knock this dude out, get a paycheck. So who's coming with you to LA? Who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, corner will be uh, one of my training teammates here in East County. Um, will be Jeff Peterson. He fights for LFA. Yeah, I know Jeff quite well, actually. Yeah, he's uh, he's oh, quite yeah, the talent. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome, man. He's, he's going to be there for the weight cut and uh, be a training partner. And then I have Dominic Cruz and uh, Eric Del Ferro in the corner as well. Which I mean, those two right there. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better corner. I mean, especially Dominic. No, no. He's uh, you know he's really uh, doing amazing things with the analyst work. So that that's awesome as well. Um, million dollar question though: uh, How do you see this fight ending on August fourth? How do you see this playing out? Uh, I see I see a back and forth war for a couple of rounds, maybe two. Uh, I think I'll finish them at the end of the second or the third when I start finding the timing. But, um, you know, like I said, it's a fight. And it's, hard, it's hard to say. Um, I might even end up taking him down. You know, it might hit me and I might not like it. So, uh, but I do see me coming out on top. I just don't see him beating me anywhere stylistically. I think uh, I'm a better fighter than him and I'm ready to prove it. And what about uh, downtime? You know, we talked all about training camp and, and everything you got going on. Uh, what do you like to do to unwind? I heard your dog there. I'm sure you're getting out for some walks uh, with him, uh, you know, or her. I don't really know which uh, gender the dog is, but uh, but nevertheless, uh, are you you know you watching any Netflix or playing any video games, anything like that? Yeah, I'll get home um, and I rest. So I'll hop on the Xbox, play some Call of Duty, uh, Skyrim, whatever, you know. And then uh, I got three dogs actually, so it's a pain in the ass taking care of those guys. So. Uh, Cleaning the house, you know, taking them for walks, feeding them, dealing with them, and just just really resting for the next training session, you know. So I live a simple life. Weekends, just me and my girlfriend, you know. Most will do is go kayaking and go to the bar or something, you know. So which is awesome. You know, I mean, the, to get to go outdoors is, is amazing. I, I live up in Canada, so we do a lot of that stuff too. So I can I can relate. I was just camping actually uh, last weekend. Um, you mentioned uh, Call of Duty. Now, are you don't strike me as the type of guy on Call of Duty to like go do the multiplayer thing and talk talk crap on the headset. You, you seem like a guy who's just a silent assassin. Yeah, I kind of I kind of like. It's been a while since I played, so. Uh... I just actually got a new Xbox One, so it's been a while since I played that one. I got a new game. I got a Skyrim, so I've been nerding out on that game. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's, just, it's whatever. I don't, I don't even have a headset. I just go on. I laugh at these guys when they talk, and I just, I just do my thing. You know, I don't take it too serious. Good stuff. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be serious business. It is this fight coming up here on August 4th. It's uh, UFC 227. Matt, it was uh, great getting a chance to talk to you, man. Just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours. Yeah, so uh, Facebook, follow my athlete page. It's Matt Sales, real simple. Uh, Instagram, at Matt Sales, underscore, after the Matt. And uh, Twitter, I don't really use Twitter, so don't even worry about it. But just give me a follow and uh, stay tuned.
What's up, fight fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.